This is Pastor Tom Mullins. I'm the pastor of Lexa and Marshall United Methodist Churches here in Phillips County, Arkansas, just west of West 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 Helena, uh, Arkansas, just uh, west of the um, I guess 20 some miles maybe or so uh, from the Mississippi River here on the West Bank, and uh, we are here today this afternoon. I apologize I wasn't here much last week. We uh, um, or we I had to uh, go to uh, Little Rock. I had a, an ablation procedure uh, done to my heart uh, to try to treat AFib and I uh, wanted to share that with you. And I want to thank you all for your prayers. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, uh, got a good report from the doctor, like a post-op report. Uh, and uh, I am so grateful and want to say on air and on, on, as we broadcast that I am so grateful for my wonderful wife of uh, Kim Mullins of uh, the last 35 years that we've been through some uh, different things and challenges and, and stuff and the health problems of the last year have been just uh, pretty enormous and I am so grateful to her for her patience and uh, uh, help uh, being able to deal with this situation and things uh, hoping that she never has to go through all of this crap uh, I just, and uh, I just say that's putting it mildly, I guess. It's one of those things that we just, um, I don't know. It, it, it's something that you just uh, have to experience to know. And I, and I know that I have lots of uh, parishioners and prayer warriors and different ones that have been praying for us. And, I, and I'm so grateful to them as well. But uh, that immediacy and being able to be there uh, uh, for the worst of, of uh, health uh, kind of situations and things that have been going on, uh, the eye, and then to turn around and find AFib and, and to begin to into that. And then now coming up, we have the, uh, um, uh, the procedures to my leg, uh, the varicose veins, and um, uh, not for looks, as of course, it's, it's more of a, a medical as they uh, try to repair and fix that. And I hate to throw all that out there. I know. People get tired of hearing other people complain about their problems and different stuff like that. But I am so grateful to you uh, for your kind words and your prayers and thoughts. And uh, just a lot of, uh, you know, a hodgepodge of different things going on with us here. Uh, you know, we've only been here for uh, less than four months now and uh, kind of moving into that area. Uh, we are excited, however. We do have a good turn of things, and that's that we're waiting for our uh, first grandchild, Isabella Lynn. Uh, her mom, Maddie, seems to be doing very well, our daughter-in-law. And uh, our son is uh, kind of on the edge of, of just anticipation and, and uh, worry, but we uh, want to pray and lift him up as well. Uh, it's the end of October. We're getting ready for uh, our, our carnival, which will be our, our Halloween carnival, which will be on um, the 29th, beginning at 4 o'clock, probably 4 to 7 bouncy houses, all kinds of food, all kinds of games, all kinds of things going on to celebrate the end of the harvest um, and or as we move into the end of the harvest, uh, different ones. Uh, I've watched all day as uh, uh, tractor trailer after tractor trailer going back and forth to the gin uh, and dealing with all of that kind of stuff too. So it's, it's good that uh, life goes on, life is being active and things are going on. Uh, it was a beautiful and wonderful uh, service uh, worship service done by the women in ministry at uh, uh, there at St. Paul up in Kansas and over in Oklahoma City at Oklahoma City University with the St. Paul School of Thol Theology uh, Seminary that is in both locations. It's actually in Leewood, Kansas at Church of the Resurrection in one of their buildings. And it kind of makes it sound like it's just like an outbuilding or something like that, but uh, it used to be their main sanctuary. And uh, they... Their church is, uh, you've heard me say before, I think we're talking about 20,000 folks that are involved with the ministry and mission of, of uh, the church that is led by their senior pastor, Adam Hamilton. So that's that's pretty unique, uh, and, and, it, and it's uh, just a wonderful church. It, you would you would be kind of surprised at the at the um, the warmth and the hospitality and, and the and the the outreach. Uh, that comes from such a big congregation, you would think that they would be kind of into themselves and all that kind of stuff. But they are always welcoming and always, or at least that's been my experience, 
having gone to school uh, in one of the in the C building now it's called, and then the B building is a, a, a different. It's a, there's all kinds of unique stuff there uh, as far as that goes, and then of course the new sanctuary, which is the this has the sails. Uh, locally they call it they say it looks like a kind of like a spaceship or something like that but uh it's one of those things that it's the sails the seven sails and talking about the seven seas and the the uh i guess you would call it like the outreach of uh the into the world and the entire world being inclusive of that and uh the, the ministry of jesus christ being that it reaches around the world from the north to the south to the east to the as far as you can go until you become west again right so uh it's just amazing to see uh such a structure such a, a beautiful structure and a place of, of worship and, and a facility that facilities that they have there so uh didn't want to kind of get off on that but then anyway we want to pray for our carnival that's upcoming hopefully uh we can extend that invitation to our all entire community there will be lots of folks come to enjoy our time together, our fellowship, and our our uh, just uh, thanking God for all the great and wonderful things that He's done for us. Uh, being an agro agronomist uh, type community that we are, of course, in the Delta, it's one of those things to thank God for the riches of of the soil of this of the of the earth, and then uh, the things that are produced in order to make those those profits and to make those things. Uh, to make those salaries and things that of the people that work here and do things here so uh, we want to pray and be thankful to god for that as we get closer to thanksgiving in a few weeks uh, we want to be able to do that as well as to thank god for all that he does for us and to thank those who are around us who do the, the behind the scenes work the people that are not out in the front and and you don't see and recognize maybe you recognize what they do but maybe don't see it um, you know, see them being uh, applied for the hard work that they do and different things like that. Um, I am so grateful to have you here with me today. Uh, this has been a three-year journey. We are about, this is the last chapter today, will be the last chapter, chapter 21 of the book of Judges. And uh, I don't want anything to interrupt us while we're, our time together. Um, I was trying to think, I, I was going to say schoolwork, I got that to go uh, I've been keeping busy, I promise you, you despite uh, the uh, invasive uh, procedures uh, that have gone on. Uh, I was th thought it was kind of funny. I, I didn't really think I was doing anything exceptional. And uh, when I showed up uh, for church yesterday, uh, they seemed to be kind of uh, surprised. I, uh, I am dedicated to being uh, you know, a servant of God, a servant in the house of God to go to a place of prayer. I think that's the best place to be and to do and to be a part of things. And I think that that's something we have to live by example. Um, I'm here at the parsonage today, just kind of recouping and getting everything caught back up. I, I don't know how I've let everything kind of go out of hand. I've uh, got a uh, get work for a transcript. I got to work that and put that together in a form uh, to get that to the board of ordained ministry, the registrar so that uh, as we go into the new year and the process of becoming an elder and, and, and being a full member of the uh, uh, annual conference, we are uh, looking forward to 2024 being a year of, of uh, excuse me, of uh, unifying kind of ways as United Methodists as we come together, as we approach the spring and in, the, I'm sorry, through the time of Easter and on all the things that are going on with that. But first, we have, you know, the end of this year, um, I uh, approached yesterday, talked about giving to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And uh, kind of, they, it gets kind of roped into a kind of stewardship type thing. And I was never impressed by the begathons or the or the, um, the way the televangelists kind of push that. Uh, you know, uh, you know that there is necessary uh, funds that are needed uh, to meet the budget and meet the um the, the ministry of Jesus Christ here in our community. Uh, we are thankful to you for your support of that with your prayers and also with your financial uh, things that go along with that as well. So uh, just want to thank you in advance uh, for helping us to do our job, to be able to do the things that are necessary to get out the word to people that are in need, those that are lost, those that uh, may not know Christ or maybe nominal. They, 
not been active in the church. COVID kind of put a, a dent in, in people being active and doing all those types of things. So we want to be able to, uh, to facilitate that and, and to bring that into tuition as well. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit, uh, well, it's 2.30 uh, right now. So uh, I appreciate you being here. We're going to go to the Book of Ruth tomorrow. Our reading from the uh, hymnal, or our, our, our hymn there, is by Kathleen Thomerson. It's 1966, which is more recent, and it's number 206, or 206, and uh, it's, I want to walk as a child of the light, and then, like I said, the last chapter, chapter 21 of Judges, uh, we've went through the stories of Samson and, and some of the other judges. Some of them were touched on, some of them were kind of a little more in depth. Uh, there's a, kind of a foundational thing of, of uh, the Levites and the judges and the priests and, and the different, um, uh, you know, nomenclature, I guess is what it's called, but the naming of, of those positions and those things. And, and we are in a, uh, as Christians, we are part of a priesthood. Part of the priesthood is that we are uh, servants of Christ, that we are disciples of Jesus Christ, that we are here and available to be witnesses and to show and to share uh, the love of God, the good news of the gospel, to be able to um, to be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's so much uh, that that needs to be done, but the thing is, if we are, um, you know, we have qualitative, or we take the time to listen and to talk to to God and to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us, and that we can go forward. Uh, in our mission and ministry, in the ministry of Jesus Christ, to the lost, the needy, the outliers, the the marginalized, those different types of folks. And uh, like I said today, we had our service, uh, the chapel service is what they call it, on Mondays at 11 o'clock, and it's online and there in person. And uh, to reach out and to, to name what God means to you. Like, uh, I was trying to think, it was... Uh, Hagar, I think, uh, after she had been pushed out, her and Ishmael had been sent out to the desert uh, and everything uh, by uh, uh, Abraham, uh, had been, you know, dispatched in that way, and she was just knew that Ishmael was going to die, and she was just in that moment, and when God spoke to her, the angel from God spoke to her, she said, the God who sees me. And I think that was that, that touched me today in the thought that it was like, if we would just see people, you know? Uh, sometimes I know that we feel like we're not seen or we're not heard, uh, but there's a whole lot of people out there who are not seen and they are not heard. And uh, they are just pushed to the side or pushed away. And I think the fact that we know that God sees us he sees us as children. He knows that we've made mistakes, or we know that we've made mistakes for sure. And it's one of those things that God knows that as well. And he knows that he's, and he's willing, and he, and he knows us good enough and well enough that he uh, puts us first. God thinks about us, and he only desires that we think about him and that we share the love that he has for us with others. And I can't think of anything more grand and great than that. Um, you know, God the physician, God the healer of our minds, our bodies, our souls. Uh, just amazing uh, to be and to think about. All right, well, let us, uh, let's go ahead and pray. And then uh, we'll do the uh, reading from the, um, or the, the hymn here from the, uh, the hymnal, our United Methodist hymnal. And then we'll uh, read chapter uh, 21 from the book of Judges and uh, pray and uh, discuss and pray and and uh, again I want to thank you for hanging in there with me uh, you know we we tend to be um, uh, you know just not ungrateful but just kind of accept the fact that well that's just the way it is or that's what you know um, God God's always there all just sitting around waiting for us and different stuff but God wants us to be active and to do things so uh, but I appreciate your, your time, the opportunity to be able to share God's Word with you each day. As we've done, we've done the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, the Book of Acts through Revelation, 
the book of Psalms, and now we're getting ready to start the book of Ruth, but we've done Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, and uh, of course, as we'll finish up today with Judges. So um, that's remarkable that we've spent that time and we've been able to spend that time together uh, to, to get all that uh, online out there into the, into the cyberspace world that we can share in a way that uh, the love is, is so much, um, um, I don't know, just so much more uh, than could be expected in, in past days, you know, that and there was a time when it was a horse and you were off riding and, and doing all of that. So, but to be able to sit down and take the time and to be with each other, uh, I think, and I, I find it to be a privilege to be with you. So, so thank you for all of that. Most heavenly and gracious God, we thank you for your many gifts and blessings as we come to you on this day, this 23rd day of October, 2023. We come to you humbly and we come to you to be able to share the word, to sh seek out this opportunity to be with one another. And we thank you for that fellowship. We thank you for the opportunity to read your word, to discern your word, and to learn it in a way that we are able to share it with others who are in need who are lost, who are, who are nominal, that they would be more active and more a part of what it is and know what it is to be a part of the kingdom of God. Bless this day, this reading of your word, and all of these things we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus, clear sun of righteousness. Shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness. Shine on my path. And show me the way to the Father. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. 
The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I'm looking for the coming of Christ. I want to be with Jesus. When we have run with patience the race, we shall know the joy of Jesus. In Him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Amen. Chapter 21 from the book of Judges. Now the Israelites had sworn at Mizpah, No one of us shall give his daughter in marriage to Benjamin. And the people came to Bethel and said, and sat there, until evening before God, and they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly. They said, O Lord, the God of Israel, why has it come to pass that today there should be one tribe lacking in Israel? On the next day the people got up early and built an altar there, and offered burnt offerings and sacrifices of well-being. Then the Israelites, which of all the tribes of Israel did not come up into the assembly of the Lord, for a solemn oath had been taken concerning whoever did not come up to the Lord to Mizpah, saying, That one shall be put to death. But the Israelites had compassion for Benjamin their kin, and said, One tribe is cut off from Israel this day. What shall we do for wives for those who are left? Since we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them any of our daughters as wives. When then they said, is there anyone from the tribes of Israel who did not come up to the Lord to Mizpah? It turned out that no one from Gabesh Gilead had come to the camp, to the assembly. For when the roll was called among the people, not one of the inhabitants of Gabesh Gilead was there. So the congregation sent 12,000 soldiers there and commanded them, Go put the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead to the sword, including the women and the little ones. This is what you shall do. Every male and every woman that has lain with a male you shall devote to destruction. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young virgins who had never slept with a man and brought them to the camp of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. Then the whole congregation sent word to the Benjaminites, who were at the rock of Remom, and proclaimed peace to them. Benjamin returned at that time, and they gave them the women whom they had saved alive of the women of Gabesh Gilead, but they did not suffice for them. The people had compassion on Benjamin because the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. So the elders of the congregation said, What shall we do for wives for those who are left? since there are no women left in Benjamin. And they said, There must be heirs for the survivors of Benjamin, in order that a tribe may not be blotted out from Israel. Yet we cannot give any of our daughters to them as wives. For the Israelites had sworn, Cursed be anyone who gives a wife to Benjamin. So they said, Look, the yearly festival of the Lord is taking place at Shiloh which is north of Bethel, on the east of the highway that goes from Bethel to Sketchum and south to Lebanon. And, there, and they instructed the Benjamites, saying, Go and lie and wait in the vineyards and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to dance in the dances, then come out of the vineyards, and each of you carry off a wife for himself from the young women of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin, then if their fathers and their brothers come to complain to us, we will say to them, Be generous and allow us to have them, because we did not capture in battle a wife for each man, but neither did you incur guilt by giving your daughters to them. The Benjamites did so. They took wives for each of them from the dancers whom they abducted. 
Then they went and returned to their territory and rebuilt the towns and lived in them. So the Israelites departed from there at that time by tribes and families, and they went out from there to their own territories. In those days there was no king in Israel. All the people did what was right in their own eyes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I uh, was trying to see. I feel like I've, I've jumped somehow. Maybe it's just because I've had the, the five days between our readings. Uh, I was still going to go back. So, okay, all right, we're good. I was going to say, the thing is, um, 19 was the Levite's concubine, who, their Gibeah, the men uh, uh, tape, attacked and raped and, and killed her. The Levite cut her up, sent her to the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes were offended by that and thought it was terrible that they had done what they did. They go back, they battle, they in the tribe of Benjamin his, his Gibeah was a part of the tribe of Benjamin so they annihilated them and uh, and everything so uh, there, there seems to be this kind of the weird uh, culture to me uh, at the time that this is done and the thing that gets me is, with it is that it appears you know to have uh, heirs is like something of, of, of crazed uh, in the Old Testament. There's something about, uh, it seems to be a, a qualitative part of, of Scripture, uh, and I don't know what you think about this or, or how you would think about this, but the, the idea is to have children, and, and that is like the utmost. There's nothing uh, to have an heir and to have, uh, you know, the wives to have children and to have multiple children. The first child is, is, or the son is, the first son is the, is the, uh, the pinnacle of what that means and everything. But uh, I always think it's always amazing how uh, the ancestors, our ancestors in the faith, excuse me, all the way back here to the time of the judges, uh, they've always worked a way around. There's workarounds. Uh, they establish something. They make a commitment to God, and then they they try to. Um, they, they try to answer for God, I guess is how I'd like to say it. So like instead of, because they had promised God uh, there that they would not give any of their children or any of their uh, their daughters as, as wives to the Benjamites. But then, well, who wasn't here, by the way, when we made this commitment or made this vow? So that's the first thing they do. And they go out and they try to fix it that way. And that doesn't work. And then they try to say that, you know, they knew they had this festival, they had the dancing, and, and the women would be out and, and by themselves or whatever, and uh, it could be taken by. So that way, uh, the they, they didn't give their daughters to, and then as formally as, an, as a, a tribe, they didn't do it either. Uh, so it took away the guilt from the tribe, took away the guilt from the, from the uh, fathers and brothers. And uh, I think that's just... Uh, it, I think that that's true to us today. You know, we, we tend to try to, to work it around. Well, you know, I didn't I didn't kill nobody, but then, you know, Scripture kind of comes along, Christ comes along in, in Scripture and tells us, well, it's not so much that you killed somebody, but that you thought you would, would like to kill them or that you would uh, do something to them, uh, you know, or think about it. And uh, we need to clean up and clear up those thoughts, too. You know, not to look at a woman with lust and in and, and your heart, and, uh, that that is just as guilty of being a, a, an act against God as committing adultery, as uh, committing fornication, as uh, all of the different sins that you can think of and come up. And they're not all sexual sins as well. So uh, we get kind of caught up in that and, and, and different things. But, uh, you know, we've had some kind of interesting stories that, to this point. And uh, they keep getting better and better, I guess, is how you'd say, or uh, and different things are more complicated, I should say, not better and better, but more complicated. And uh, as we go to the book of Ruth, uh, that's uh, kind of 
a lot of speculative stuff on that and different things and pulls back. And, uh, I think that when our translators work with the Bible and they work with the text, uh, a lot of times they'll try to make it a little less, um, you know, uh, our modern version might have a comment that says something to the effect of, you know, uh, he, he, he took her by force and, and uh, you know, and, and, and whatever he might have done to her as far as that, and violating her that way. But it says, and then like the older text will say, he took her and knew her, you know, or they uncovered her feet, or he uncovered, or she uncovered his feet, or uh, there's like little catchphrases that were not, uh, I don't know how you want to say it. It's like the, the idea is that it was, it was written one way, and it was very truthful, and it was very explanatory, and then it comes along somebody else, and their their moral uh, 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 ground is a little less of that, and so it's like you know, well, they wanted to know them, or they wanted to be with them, or or they took them into the tent, or they, you know, and it's like it, there's a there's a little bit more to that. It's like it's you know. Uh, and that way, you know, to be able to consummate a marriage sounds a little nicer than if you say, you know, they uh, had sex to, to, to make their marriage legal or, or however that might be and stuff. And um, I, I think that, you know, we're, we're, I think we're mature enough in the 21st century to be able to talk about different things that are maybe a little more intimate than would have been expected and kind of glossed over in the past so uh the book of judges is a book of just people doing dumb things that just don't seem right to us but whatever the the background of of their of their of their society their civilization it was something that it, it it's demonstrative of it's like 11 tribes you know they killed a lot of people they made the vow that they would not have anything to do with these people but then they got the guilt thing going where the, all of a sudden they're like, well, we just wiped out a 12th of our people, our 12th of, of, the, of the, one of the 12 tribes. And uh, then the guilt starts to kick in and then we start to try to figure out ways to fix it. And that's where we, even as Christians, these are Jewish folks, of course, but uh, the, uh, the fact that as we uh, mature in our faith and different things, as it evolves, into Christianity, it's one of those things that we uh, realize that uh, we—it's more individual now. But it's like, but it's like one person, one person who, you know, they—I I would say, back in these days, it's one of those things like I killed, you know, uh, the the patriarch of of the family, or I killed the heir, the firstborn son of the family. And then it's like the, the, it, there's degrees of guilt that are just kind of bizarre to us in, in today's age. Um, you know, I um, I think it's like when you hear reporting of like a battle or a war that's going on, say like the war in Israel and Gaza, you hear the war, 500 people were killed in Israel today. Is Just for example, 500 people were killed 300 of them, or 30 of them, say, not not at 300, but they say 30, 30 of them were children. And not only were they children, they were in a hospital. So they were in a hospital killed, or they were in a daycare or a preschool. And it's like, that's the degree of things that are, that are bizarre to me, because if you think about it, 500 people died and were killed. And I'm sure that maybe out of 500, I'm sure that not all of them were soldiers, which that shouldn't make a difference either, but it, it, it kind of does. And, and, and I think we get caught up in that. And it's like, that's what Old Testament is. Old Testament is a different value. So like the Oklahoma bombing, uh, when that happened years ago, it was like, uh, excuse me, but then the Oklahoma bombing years ago, uh, it was the it wasn't the the building and the and the employees at the building so much as it was the preschool that was at the building and and i think that's what 
And then because we have this kind of weird, for us it's weird, I'm saying. It's not weird for them, but it's what weird for us is that it's like you have this thought that it's like, well, we have to keep that name and that tribe alive. But So we're going to do some roundabout things that we've made this commitment to God of what we would and would not do. And a lot of times those are rash too. Those That, that tends to be, and even today, we say, oh, oh God, I will do better if you will do this for me and make those negotiations. But the thing is here is that God wanted them to be plentiful and to replenish and all the things that are promised, but they had made the vow. They it, God never said, I don't want you to, to, I want you to wipe these, these people completely out of the face of the earth that they never, that the name of, of, uh, of Benjamin is never spoken of again. And then uh, or his descendants are ever spoken of again. God never said that. They did. God, we swear that by winning this battle, we will make sure that we never, we will never allow them to marry our, our daughters. We'll never, you know, and it, it I don't know if that makes sense a lot, but the fact is sometimes I think we get caught up and lost in that and that we think that um, that is uh, a part of the kingdom and a part of, of uh, our commitment to God is to make things right. Uh, and then when we make those rash decisions and different things, uh, the thing is I don't understand why people don't think they can re renegotiate. Like your your words have power, but if you tell God, well, the first person that comes out of the house, uh, I'm going to dedicate, or I'm going to sacrifice, to uh, the first you know that comes to me, it's like, how how do you not know that that's going to be one of your family members, <laughs> one of your close family members is going to come out of that house, you know that's the as we talked back in in other chapters. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it just amazes me how, uh, uh, I don't want to say ignorant, but just how, um, just so uh, up, charged up. And for us just to say things like that, we're going to do. And then it's like, we know that God does not require that sacrifice. So why are we trying to hedge our bet? Why are we trying to make it, make it where it's, um, mm, I, I just, it's like, if, if I say, God, I will go to battle for you. I will speak up for you. I will make, you know, uh, and, and I will, you know, I was, if, when we, when we destroy these people, that's that. There's no, that's, that was the. That was what God was said was going to happen. And it's like, oh, and by the way, if you help me out and you make it possible for me to have a victory in battle, I'm going to sacrifice the first person that comes out of my house when I come home. The, pe the people that are celebrating me for my victory. Uh, wow, that just, that's just something to think about, you know, just to think about how, how difficult it is that, uh, it, I don't know. Um, the thing is, God wants you to be a part of the kingdom. And the people that say and make deals all like that all the time, they say stuff like, you know, if I could just get my bills in order, I'll go to church every Sunday. I'm sorry, that's backwards. Go to church every Sunday. Be a part of the ministry of that church, your local church. Get out there and do stuff. And then you will see the reward that God has for you. You don't have to give God anything other than your time, your love, and your energy. It's like that's, and uh, oh, I don't know. I, I'm getting a little frustrated with it, the idea behind it. But it's like one of those things. That it's like, you know, we should think about that. We should think about if God gives us something, it's like accept the gift. You don't have to. It, you don't have to make up or, or do anything. It, grace is like that. You know, we have that prevenient grace that pulls us towards God. We have that justifying grace is when we step into the, into what it is is to be what it, what it means to be a part of the kingdom of God. And then finally, the last part of that is we are sanctified because the Spirit. It's just like at baptism, 
Well, you know, for Jesus, the baptism, it wasn't that he was uh, washing away his sins. He was actually being blessed by God and sent forth to serve and to be godly and, and uh, Christ-like, not being Christ-like, actually being Christ in, in the world. So, um, you know, it amazes me how we uh, sometimes get this all twisted up. Uh, I'm not blaming these folks for the way they reacted because we do the same stuff. We do the exact same stuff. So uh, it's one of those things to learn from them. They made the mistake. We can see the mistake that we may have made, made in our own lives and then to be able to correct that and go back to God. Say, God, I was rash. I, I did not mean that I wanted to, my daughter to die. I did not mean for these people to be wiped off the, the face of the earth. I just meant for us to be able to be victorious in, the, in, the, in the, what had happened and how it happened. And, uh, you know, I don't know the background, the circumstances. That's like the thing with the Canaanites. I, I think that they, I believe they were given, uh, you know, many opportunities. And still to this day could come back to God if, if that was the way that they would choose to do. Um, I don't, I don't think whatever curse or whatever, you know, they'll, they'll always be at war. They'll always be this and that. No, not always. There's, there's a, there's an end point. There's an end point, And we all know that if we've read, if we know scripture, if we've ever been to church, we know that there's a day of reckoning at the end. It's the day when all the tribulation ends and we end up before the judgment seat, you know, the good to the one side, the bad to the other, the goats and the sheep separated. We know that that day is coming, and we know that after that is is the kingdom, is peace, eternal life, with God and in and, and, and His presence and and uh, just the buildup of all of that and stuff. Um, you know, I I think that we should, as we read Scripture, we should look at it in that vein, not in the uh, making people more like us and more like church and more like but it's like we should use these decisions and the things that we do so that we go out and are active and do God's work in the world and we include everyone and it don't matter if you if you are a part of Wicca or witchcraft or Satanism or or uh, secularism in the way that you're just you know I'm just this is what we get this is how we live and this is what we do it's like it's our it's our example of how we live and how we react and things that we do in the world as Christians that is going to be the thing that brings others into the kingdom. It's not um, by promising something that you're probably not going to do anyway, or you're not going to do it for long term. You're going to do it for a couple of days. I ain't going to smoke another cigarette for. You know, because God got me through this situation or whatever, or I'm never going to drink again, or I'm never going to, I'm never, when it starts with that, never, uh, God, I'm never, you're you're probably going to regret that. You're probably, I I would say more than likely, 99.99%, you're going to regret that you said I never will and promise God that you never would because I, I, I think that's a that's a pretty hefty deal uh, when it comes to that. And uh, the thing is to say, is God with your help? You know, with your help, I will do better. God, with your help, I will make this happen. I will do what you say, and this will be this will be good. This will be good. Uh, that when you say, I never will. Yeah, it's, that's just not. You know as well as I do that that's not going to work. You're never. You can't just stop. You know. Well, I haven't. I haven't taken a drink in twenty five years. Yeah, great. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to. You know, uh, you you weren't supposed to drink to excess. Everything is moderation. So if you've been getting drunk and high and doing that. Uh, and all of a sudden for 10 years you don't do it uh, that's great and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of you and I'm, I'm sure that God is as well but uh, the thing is uh, when you if you do I should say not when 
But if you lapse and you fall, come on back. You know, it's not that you can say, well, I knew that I wouldn't be able to make it and then everything. But if you did your 100% moving forward to make sure that you don't get drunk and high and whatever else is out there for you to do that you shouldn't be doing, if you do that uh, and and you try not to and you do it for six weeks and you fall off, come back. You know, uh, God loves you. God loves you and, and come back. But if your addiction of whatever it might be or your whatever your process or whatever stuff you're doing, it's like just know that you can always come back. You can always come back. Not that you can just be like lackadaisical and say, well, I just, I just screwed up again. I just, but if you give a hundred percent try, you can come back. You can come back. There's, you know, there's, there's some people who've done some hard, atrocious things. I worked at the prison. I worked at the, the maximum security prison. And I know that there's so much uh, of folks that just uh, abominable. I mean, I, I can't even think of words to describe some of the things that they did, not only out in the free world, but the stuff that they did behind those bars and in those prison cells and in that community that's locked up. Um, not only not only inmates, but the others as well. And it's like having that knowledge and having that insight. Uh, you know, people can people are monsters at times. They can do some really really harmful stuff and I, I just think that um, you know just know that you can come back know that that, that you, you may have to spend the time behind the bars or you may have to spend the time in, in medical and you may have to spend the time in you know whatever it takes to rehabilitate or to fix yourself or to get to get better but if you're open-minded to it and you and you, you realize that but just don't think just don't think and don't say, I never will, because the human condition is that more likely you will. And uh, I, I kind of leave it with that thought today. As we've gone through the book of Judges, it's like one of those things, whether it was Samson or one of the others, it's remarkable to see that how uh, the human condition is that human people, human people, humans, <laughs> Uh, as people are always uh, involved with that kind of a, you know a misnomer of of what it means to uh, to interact with God, but the love that you have for God and the love that I hope that you have for each other uh, is something that we can overcome. We can overcome the craziness of of life and the, and the challenges that come about. There's so much about uh, uh, there's so many possibilities. I mean of what God can do for you, uh, you know, and, and, and the remarkable part about it is he just asks that you you fear and respect him. Respect him in a way that, that you uh, realize that life is important. And not only is your own life important, but the life of those around you is as important as, as anything that you might or might not do. Uh, I think it's pretty remarkable. Uh, how we have opportunities. We live in, a, in, in, as Americans here in the United States, we live in a way that, uh, you know, we, we're, we're pretty wasteful. And uh, what it is, as Christians, I think we're, we're somewhat wasteful too, in that we could do some really cool and great things if we would just allow God to, to do the things that God says that God will do. Uh, and, and just get on board, get on board with what God wants you to do and how he wants you to do it and uh, just look at people you know the ones that uh, it's not all about the ones the, the on the outside that look like they have nothing but it's also the ones that are dealing with emotional dealing with uh, you know we have the physical world that we can see the things that are going on there but sometimes those those are internal as well but uh, emotional and spiritual need uh, you know, to be, you know, uh, to lack spiritual health uh, uh, can be just as deadly and just as damaging 
as having bad physical health or having uh, you know emotional health that, that's that's not good uh, in any way or shape or form I have a degree in psychology but I still wonder you know I the human condition is something that is uh, very unique to each person and I know that if you I know for a fact whatever your deficiency that you think you have is probably not as bad as someone else's and I think that whatever you think that you cannot be forgiven of it can be it can be forgiven of you uh, it's not saying that you don't have to pay a price or there's not a responsibility the folks in Gibeah and the folks in Benjamin they paid the price for what they had done. But there, there was no king in the land. People did whatever they wanted, meaning that there was no law in the land. God's law was abandoned for whatever you thought was right or whatever you thought you wanted to do. You just did whatever you wanted to do. That's what they're talking about. It's not, it's not that there wasn't a king, like a, a King Charles of Great Britain or something. It was like there was no, there was no law. There was no, no God's, God's law had, had evaporated somehow. People that had been uh, delivered from Egypt, people that had been freed, people that had the good life, had the quality of, of, the, of the land of milk and honey, the promised land had that. And still, they were, they were without law. They were without God's law, which is the law that's in our hearts, as Jeremiah talks about, as we talks about how... Um, you know, that it would be written on our hearts, that we would be a new people under a new covenant. Uh, Jeremiah 31, 33, you know, you're reading that, and, 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 uh, and I think it's restated in Hebrews, and maybe just some other places as well, uh, in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. But it talks about, <coughs> about a new people with a new name. And uh, the remarkable part about it is we are not a local group of anything. We are a universal group, and uh, unfortunately, the Catholics they pulled that that title uh, into their uh, into the into the church, the Roman Church. But uh, the fact is, it's like you can't be Roman Catholic. You can be Catholic Christian, meaning that you're a universal Christian. You're, you're part of God's church. I don't care where you live or where you. Uh, or how much you have or how little you have the fact is you're a part of God's church if you believe in Jesus Christ if you seek out the word of God and you listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you you're in <laughs> you're, you're, you're one of us right well it's been almost an hour I apologize for taking so long today I, uh, I guess that's just I needed to, to get out there and talk to some folks and to talk about the Bible and, and to do that so I thank you for being a part of that so let us pray Dear Gracious God, we thank you for this time together as we have read the last chapter of the book of Judges as we go and prepare for tomorrow to be in the book of Ruth. We thank you for this Monday through Friday. Uh, it's, a, it's a good attempt by us and by me to uh, be able to broadcast and to be able to share this both on Facebook Live and then to save it there and then also to have it on YouTube, our YouTube channel at Marvel UMC. We just thank you for this time and the effort that it takes to be able to be a part of the kingdom. Help us to serve and to love our neighbor. Help us to love and to serve you with all our heart, mind, and soul as we lift up our witness to those who are in need, those who are lost, the marginalized. And we ask for your help in interpretation and in being able to share your word with others, not as a, as a weapon, but to use it as a, as a loving tool that is able to help and to build others up and to have them to know you as their personal Savior. Bless this time together, and bless this reading of your word, and this readings from the hymnal of the United Methodist Church. Bless our time together. Thank you for being our God. And it's in your name we ask and we do all of these things, and we do them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, may God bless you, and uh, I appreciate your time. If you're listening to us live or later, uh, be a blessing, and uh, not only today, but tomorrow. Uh, go out there and be good to somebody, and uh, have a great afternoon.